Stopping no deal will require all the opposition parties to work together. And of course, that includes the Liberal Democrats. Their MP, Leila Moran, is here in the studio. Very good morning Good to morning. You. No, I mean, within all of this, it's fair to say, isn't it, the Liberal Democrats don't seem to have been playing ball. They don't seem to have been wanting to cooperate with the other parties as much as some people were expecting. No, we absolutely, we have been all along. I mean, the, the People's Vote movement was based on cross-party working. And I, I will make the point, you know, every single step of the way, where there has been an opportunity to work with other parties had they wanted to, and, you know, we had been trying to work with Corbyn on a People's Vote for very many years already, um, that has happened. And, and where we are now, and I have to say, if there's one thing Boris Johnson has done this week is concentrated the minds of those who are intent on working together to avert a disastrous no deal Brexit. And what we're going to see next week, uh, and fair criticism to past weeks where, you know, maybe we didn't quite get our act together, weren't all pulling in the same direction. Jo Swinson in her speech two weeks ago laid out this legislative route. We will work together on that basis. And that's what we're going to do next week. I think people will be positively surprised by what we can achieve when we pull together and we intend to. So w what are you aiming for in this coming week? Because actually David Gorg wouldn't tell us specifically what he wanted. John McDonnell wouldn't tell us specifically what he wanted to achieve. What do the Liberal Democrats specifically want to achieve this week? Well, what Joe Swinson has said, and, and I fully ascribe to you, I mean, look, it's just logical. We need an extension. Clearly, that's the first thing we need. Uh, October the 31st is, is looming, and every other option, including a general election, doesn't give us enough time. So I just think that's, that doesn't take... That's not rocket science, that's just logic. Uh, and the three-step process that we'd like to see is, number one, an extension for the purposes of a people's vote. If anyone ever wanted evidence of how bad Brexit is for not just our country, our economy, but also our constitution and our parliament, parliamentary sovereignty, it's this. You know, we need to just make this stop. And the idea that even passing any kind of deal or certainly going off the cliff edge of no deal is going to make us stop talking about Brexit, it's not. That's the beginning. So we stand by our stop Brexit stance, but we do that via a people's vote, and that's step one. But if we can't achieve that, then two has to be a general election. But it has to be before we leave. There's no point in calling a general election on the 17th of October. There wouldn't be time. The clock starts ticking. So you have to achieve an extension first. And if we can't get that, we have to, as parliamentarians, consider revoking Article 50. We cannot allow a prime minister who has himself no mandate, delivering a policy that it has no mandate, People out there are scared by the idea of no deal. It has real consequences. I think if it came down to it, you revoke Article 50 before going off the cliff edge of no deal. But is it, isn't some of the language a little bit dangerous here? In that you say people out there are scared of a they no are. deal. Well, I'm That's sure, what they're telling well, me. Well, I'm sure some people are. But we can't, we can't actually just make that assumption, can we, that the, the majority of people in this country are scared of a no deal Brexit. Plenty of people out there say... Actually, this is effectively what we voted for. And if this is, if that's the case, then can't we just ask? <laughs> can't we check? And that's exactly what we mean by people's vote. If we get to the point where, you know, he's, we saw this morning, Barnier has outright rejected getting rid of the backstop. We're assuming that he's not going to be able to change the withdrawal agreement as it is. Interesting side note, you know, this prorogation does mean that if Boris Johnson did want to bring back the withdrawal agreement, he now can. He can try again. I, we'll see if that works or not. And we've said, as Liberal Democrats, we would support the withdrawal agreement if he put it back to the people with the option to remain. But if we can't do that, and we end up with this no deal being the only other option, I think it's only right to go back to the people and go, really? Really? You want to damage the economy by £30 billion a year, according to the OBR? Really? You want to face medicine shortages, food shortages, let alone what that's going to do to the stance of Britain in the international community? You know, it, we need to check that that's what people want. And if it's not what they want, they need the option to remain. And there were protests across the country at short notice yesterday where people were demanding that that's what happened. Isn't it legitimate to ask whether you've got the courage of your convictions, though, in terms of if this doesn't happen this week as you would like to see and and parliamentarians gaining control of of the order papers and the agenda this week then the other option is a vote of no confidence in the government in which joe swinson your leader has said well, we're not gonna we're not gonna back anything that puts jeremy corbyn into number 10. well what she said 
is, is really important. Well, she has said she'd meet with them. We are working with the Labour Party. They are part of this cross-party group that we are a part of as well. Um, and what Joe said was it's up to Jeremy Corbyn to show that he has the confidence of the House, that he's got enough MPs to be able to back him and win that vote. What she stated was a fact, which is that I don't think he does. And if he doesn't, then we need to think of an alternative. And what she'd said was that Harriet Harman or Ken Clark actually might stand a better chance of being able to lead you know, this interim government of national unity or whatever it might be to deliver what we're trying to do next week. So, so is, is, is that the case then that you're saying that the Lib Dems wouldn't support Jeremy Corbyn unless enough other people would do it? So, the, so effect have effectively your vote would have no... no no impact. Not at all, not at all. But in, in a sense, you know, he's going to get nowhere unless he can get Remainer Conservatives, Conservatives who are, you know, examining their conscience, having said that they didn't want to support Boris Johnson, they'd received assurances he wouldn't prorogue Parliament, and now he has done for five weeks. You know, if he, they, he can't convince those Conservative MPs to back him, then it really almost doesn't matter what we think, does it? I mean, we will, we've already put down our own motion and signed up to a motion of no confidence, but it, it, the convention is that unless Jeremy Corbyn does it, it doesn't go anywhere. And he has to prove that he can get those Conservative votes, otherwise it's kind of pointless. And the whole thing is pointless unless we can secure that extension first, because even if we called that general election, it would have to come with an extension so that there was time to people to make their choice about who they wanted to lead the country, and then we decide what to do. You mentioned the... the the protests that there were yesterday. I don't know what the figures were, but certainly, a, you know, a good number of people turned out to protest. A lot of the placards were saying, you know, this is, you know, not democratic, the death of democracy. Do you agree that the prorogation is, is anti-democratic? Absolutely. What he's trying to do... <coughs> come on. This, no, but, but, this but, whole but, rhetoric... But, the, the, but, but my point would yeah. be, how can you complain about something being anti-democratic when you're the party that was, wants to actively ignore the results of a huge That's democratic exercise. If that were true, we would say and have always said that you know we would just do outright. And even in you know even now, we are still calling for a people's vote because that is the democratic way to ask the people. We want to give the people the option of remain. I would campaign for it. There are tens of thousands who have joined our party because they believe that's the right thing to do. But we've never said that we would just ignore it. We've said, let's, once we have now know all the facts, look how messy this all is, that we go back to the people and give them the option. And actually, I think a lot of people well, who might not have considered Remain before, if that was the way to make Brexit stop for good, not just for now, but well, for but, good, would pick it. But I admit that that's turning around and saying to the 17.4 million or whatever, you got it wrong. Is it, let's do it again, you got it wrong. It's not you got it wrong, it's are you sure? Are you sure? And actually of the 17.4 million people equally, can you say that every single one of them voted for no deal? I'm pretty sure that that's not the case. I think it's entirely reasonable to go back and go, okay, that's what you wanted at the time, is this really what you wanted? Now, what I found striking in the protest in Oxford, and it was huge, a Conservative councillor, a former councillor, stood up there with the tannoy saying, I cannot abide this anymore, and resigned from the Conservative Party there and then because he felt that what Boris Johnson was doing was reckless. And people there feel it's an authoritarian power grab. This is Boris Johnson doing what's best for Boris Johnson, not what's best for the country. And that's why people were out there protesting. They feel they have been silenced by this. Not just Parliament, the people have been silenced, and they are speaking out. Leila Moran, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.